Good morning, and welcome to virtual worship from North Congregational Church in Farmington Hills, Michigan, for Sunday, November the 15th, 2020. Our theme today is Return to God, as we think about not only the ways that the prophets called God's people to cleanse their hearts and to make their obedience to God's will not just a matter of behavior, but also a matter of heartfelt affirmation. And so as we think about those things, we'll get ready for worship by hearing a couple of seasonal Thanksgiving hymns. The first is Now Thank We All Our God, arranged by John Benton. And the second is the hymn We Plow the Fields and Scatter. Both are played by Patricia Butler, our North Congregational Church organist.
Thank you, Pat. We will be having special Thanksgiving music and be thinking about Thanksgiving for the next couple of weeks as we approach the Congregationalists' 400th anniversary of the landing at Plymouth Rock. Right now, time for a children's message. So gather round. So kids, have you ever tried something brand new that you've never seen or heard of before? What's it like? Is it fun? Is it scary? What about a new food that you have to have because you're so hungry, but you don't even know what it is? We think about a lot of things with the pilgrims, but we don't always think about how many new things they had to try. They had to try new ways of growing food. They had to try corn and potatoes and many other things that they had not really eaten before. They had to try to live in a place with no help, no helpers around. It was a challenging time. And I know that in our Zoom Sunday School class, many of you are hearing about that challenging time. How did they do it? What kept them from just getting back on the Mayflower and sailing back to England? Well, they believed that God had brought them there. And they believed that God would see them through. And they believed that if they were faithful to God, no matter how hard things were, that good could come out of it. So this is one of the things we need to remember about the pilgrims for our own lives and this week and this year and always, is that sometimes things are hard. Sometimes we have to do things we don't like. But if we are basing what we do in the faith and the belief that God is watching over us, even when things are hard and even when things are bad, we all know that God is with us, watching over us, leading us, and loving us through every single thing. So today, if you find something that's hard to do, say a prayer. Say, help me, God. That much, that little prayer is a whole prayer. And thank you, God, which is also a prayer of all of its own. And discover whether or not you can do more hard things because you know God is by your side. North Church is dedicated to helping lots of people do hard things and to help people through hard times because one of the ways that God helps God's people is by sending the helpers. And so we have been inviting you all this month to help to transform donations and pledges of support for the church into ministries that feed people, that build for people, that comfort people, ministries of worship and service that will be for the sake of the world. Next week, November 22nd, 10.30 in the morning, we will be celebrating our dedication and our Thanksgiving Heritage Sunday. It will be a big day. And we will hear what the church and its ministries have meant to one member of the church. So this week, if you have received an estimate of giving card, I invite you to look it over and think what you might want to estimate that your contributions towards our ministries will be, and then return it to the church by mail or you can go onto the church website, northcongregationalchurch.org. And if you never got a pledge card, if you are someone who has found these video messages and find them meaningful, fill out that donation section, make an estimate of giving, but help us to reach out to the whole world with God's message of love, of grace, of reconciliation, and of compassion for the whole world. And now we're going to think some more about those topics, and we're going to hear Kevin Gromley, our lay reader, Reading from the book of Joel. The scripture reading this morning is from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. May God bless this reading of the word. Thank you, Kevin, for reading that scripture from the book of Joel. Joel is a book with an uncertain timing. Many of the prophetic works are very specifically timed to a particular era. This one is not. It is a word from God that has come to God's people in a time of tremendous catastrophe. Now, we are not unfamiliar with catastrophe in these times either. If I say the word plague, 
right now, I think most of you would immediately think of COVID-19, the disease that comes from coronavirus. We are in the midst of a global pandemic and the numbers are bad. And one of the reasons that we're meeting virtually and only virtually is that we um, are unable to meet in person due to fear of spreading COVID-19. In Joel's case, however, though there were plagues in those times, he is writing about a plague of locusts that has come upon the land of the people of God. And it's a terrible thing. And sometimes we don't really think about what it looks like. So I want to show you a picture. This is a swarm of locusts. This picture was taken in Senegal in 2020. So this is a contemporary version of this same thing. These gigantic grasshoppers come in massive swarms, millions and millions of them, and they descend upon crops, upon trees, upon grasses, and they're particularly common in arid areas where the, um, the crops are already sparse and very precious. And so these locusts come and they eat everything, and the result for people can be famine. It's a catastrophe. Now, there are two aspects to catastrophe. The first is the meaning that we attach to things. The meaning that causes us to say, why is this happening? Is this a punishment? Is this just random? And if it's random, where is God in this? How can God allow it? Where is God for us? Now, in Joel, the, me the message was that the locusts had come because people were tired of waiting for God. The people that Joel was speaking to, the people of God, wanted quick answers. They wanted to be saved without the trouble of changing their behaviors and their practices. They observed the forms of faith in God, but not the Spirit. Now, does that sound like some other time in this world? It sounds just like our times, and so many other times, because this is the human problem. We become very easily blinded to God as we distract ourselves with false saviors, including our own belief that we are self-sufficient, that we can handle everything, that we need nothing outside of what we can do. We are not self-sufficient. The only being in all of creation that is sufficient is God. Now, these catastrophes, therefore, come upon us hard. In the physical world, they include things like locusts and fires, floods, hurricanes, droughts, famine, and pandemic, all of which we have experienced in the world this year. Now, frequently, these are nature working itself out. This is the way of the world. This is what the nature was made to do. But we, as human beings, as thinking creatures, assign meaning to these things. We often say that they are catastrophic because people have suffered loss, and that is a catastrophe. When people are dying, it is catastrophic, whether it's from illness, from famine, from other causes. But there is also the perceived suffering that we attach to this. It is catastrophic not just because of the loss of whatever it is. It is also catastrophic because we can no longer conform the way things are happening to our own desires. And our desires and the categories that we use to understand our world are very affected by the human condition. So this is the human condition right now, and it has always been the human condition if you read the Bible. We are at war with one another and ourselves. Bitter partisanship has divided us and prevented any kind of solution while people are suffering. Humanity all over the world sees the problem as a problem of them versus of us in a world with limited resources. This was true in the time of the Exodus. That was true in the time of the divided kingdom. It was true in the time of the exile. It was true in the time of Jesus. It's been true throughout history, and it's true for us too. And here's the thing. We cannot get out of this ourselves. There is no solution that's going to just be easy and that's going to just happen miraculously. Now, where is God in all of this? People ask that all the time. I know that I've heard it many times in the midst of the pandemic. The answer is, God is right here. God is always right here. God has never left us. It is not God's absence that we suffer from, but rather that we have remade God into our own image, bitter, angry, hostile, punishing, condemning. 
In the time of Joel, they did it. In the time of Jesus, they did it. And we are still doing it. That is not how God is. The entire witness about God and people, when you take away the meaning that people have assigned to it, is that God is merciful. God is just. God is patient. God is grace-filled, forgiving us before we ever earned it. God is trying to save us, not destroy us. God loves us, as messed up as we are. God does not turn away. We are the ones who turn away. And yet God seeks us. After naming the condemnation that people's self-engagement has caused them to refuse to pay attention to God, Joel brings the solution. He says, return to God with all your heart. Admit how much you've turned away from God and God's way. And begin to practice God's way, which is grace and reconciliation and compassion. It's the same message that Jesus brought. He phrased it in another way, too. Repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. In our world, what I would say to you right now in a really confusing time is that even in the midst of darkness, there is yet light. We are moving into a dark time of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, and our festival of light, of Advent, and of the incarnation of Christmas is just coming upon us. But there are so many ways that God's light is breaking forth into the world. There are so many ways that God is trying to bring us together to help us solve the problems we have. The thing is, it takes work on our part. First, it takes the emotional work, the thing that Job expressed as you have to rend your heart, not just your garments. You have to tear into yourself. We have to get our blinders off. We have to stop being strong and judgy and risk being vulnerable and open to many different ways of doing things. We need to tear open our hardened hearts so that God can get in and so that we can get out, so that we can open our lives out into the world where we were intended to be instead of shriveling inward. Now, in our world, how might that look? We certainly need these traits. Instead of trying to claim we know the whole mind of God, I think it's better if we really would concentrate on focusing on the parts we do know. And those are the parts that Jesus taught us, living in this life, knowing the things we endure, knowing what it is like to be one of us, to forgive as we are forgiven, to love even our enemies, we don't need to like them. But we need to see that they, too, have worth in the world. We need to care for our world. And in doing so, Jesus promised us, we will discover that the kingdom of God has come near. In fact, it is here right now. Now, in the message translation, Joel's message may hit you just a little bit differently. So I want to share it as we think about how following these commands and rending our heart instead of our garments might look in this world. Joel says, there's also this. It's not too late. God's personal message. Come back to me and really mean it. Come fasting and weeping, sorrow for your sins. Change your life, not just your clothes. Come back to God, your God. And here's why. God is merciful. He takes a deep breath. He puts up with a lot. This most patient God is extravagant in love and always ready to cancel catastrophe. If I had to give you a bumper sticker for this sermon, it would be to say that God is kind, merciful, patient, and extravagant in love and will transform us if we will allow it. Will you? Soon we will celebrate the incarnation of God, the birth of Jesus. We will sing, let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. And so in this run-up to Advent, in this season of Thanksgiving, I can think of no better work we can do than to return to our loving, gracious, and compassionate God, to rend our hearts so that our light may break forth like the dawn, that we may shine forth with God's love in our lives and in our world. May God be with you, as he always is, through this and so many other times. Amen. I hope that you will take this message to heart. And as you are feeling it within yourself, remember God's graciousness, God's acceptance, God's welcoming of all of us. And so now we will hear North Church soloist Gregory Stinson, pianist Patricia Butler, 
in a recording of George Frederick Handel's Come to the Waters. And it is an audio only, so I'm going to put up a picture of some beautiful waters. And join me now for Come to the Waters. Incline your ear and hear me, incline your ear and hear me, and your soul shall live in peace. Ye shall have great joy and gladness, joy and gladness shall go with thee. Incline your ear to me, incline your ear and live. To the waters, all ye that thirsteth, all that hunger, come by and eat, and your soul shall live. Come ye, come to the waters. And your soul shall live. Thank you, Pat and Greg for that beautiful musical reminder that we are all called by God to come to the water, to find what we need, to be filled with God's love. Now is also a time for us to remember that we can come before God in prayer. And so I invite you to join me. Let us turn our hearts towards God. O gracious God, creator of all things, O God, that is the spirit of love over all the earth, over all of its people. O God, who has made us in your image, in our spirits, in our souls. We, your children, come before you filled with prayer. There are many things we ask for desperately, O God. Things that we want so much. Take away the pandemic. Help people to heal from difficult times. Make the world less angry. Let there be enough food for everyone. These are hard things, O oh God. And we know that one of the ways that you work in this world is by helping us to do those hard things for the sake of the world. And so we pray for all who are undertaking that work today. We pray for those, of course, who are seeking solutions to the pandemic, ways to stop it, ways to abate it, ways to cure it, ways to vaccinate against it, ways to keep one another safe with large and small steps that we take. Oh God, when we feel disappointed that we cannot be with those whom we love, when we miss coming together in person in so many ways, remind us again that we are doing this out of love and care for our world, for all people. 
And that not only does it keep us healthy, but it also helps to keep others healthy until we can find a way out of this time. Bless the doctors and the nurses, the researchers, the caregivers. Bless every one of us as we wash our hands and wear our masks, as we give one another food, as we care for one another, call them up on the phone. There are so many things we can do, O oh God. Help us not to give up. We ask that you also help us to feed the hungry, to care for the sick, to care for the poor. Jesus entrusted people of this world to the care of his followers and said that when we did good things for one of these folks, we would find we had done it for him. And so for his sake and the world's sake, God, make us strong so that we may provide food where there is not enough food. So we may provide care when people feel that they are hopeless, that they are left all alone, that they are helpless, so that we may provide resources for the impoverished, housing for the homeless, and other types of care that will come up that will inspire us. Give us the courage and the faith to understand that each small step will not be the final step, but an important part of the way forward, so that we do not become discouraged. And help us to grow the heart that is needed to do this work. O oh God, Joel called upon us to rend our hearts and not just our clothing, to tear open the, the protections that we have erected around our hearts and our spirits so that we will not be hurt. Give us courage to risk for the sake of the world, for the sake of one another, for the sake of your good news. Help us not only to tell the good news, but to be the good news, that you are love, that you have come among us, that you have lived and died as one of us, and that you have brought us into the reality that your kingdom is a kingdom of reconciliation, of resurrection, of grace and compassion. Give us the tools to practice these things each day. Open our eyes and our hearts to what is right around us, to the many ways that you are working in this world. We pray for our children that they may have faith. We pray for all of your pilgrim people because we are all on a journey on a journey of faith, on a journey where we step out, hoping that we are doing the right thing. Support us, O oh God, and correct us when we go astray. When we have not chosen well, give us a new start. When we have done things that we wish we had not, forgive us and help us to make restitution where we have caused harm. When we feel afraid, when we feel too awful even for your love, lift us up, sit with us, and remind us again that we are precious, that all people are precious. Give us eyes to see the preciousness of one another, eyes to see that we all carry your image and hearts to live up to that image that we bear. O oh God, we pray this day for your church, that we may truly be the family of God, that we may find ways, even when we are apart, to be together, that we may find ways to reach out into the world and make a difference, that we may find ways to stand with integrity in the presence of others who may call upon you by different names or who do not yet know you and do not yet believe in you. Help us to share that good news. Help us to be that good news. And how remind us once again, over and over again, that we can trust in these things because of Jesus. It is in his name we pray as we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we take these messages to heart, as we take these prayers into ourselves, may we all go forth worshiping and serving in the name of Jesus. As our time of worship draws to a close, I want to thank you all for being here today. I want to remind you that we are here every Sunday at 1030 a.m. And next week will be special Thanksgiving observance. And also, I want to say that we will have a few minutes of music before our benediction. We will hear Patricia Butler on the North Church organ and piano, first playing the World Peace Prayer, Lead Us from Death to Life. And then two arrangements of Amazing Grace, a piano version by Dennis Alexander, and then an organ arrangement by Frederick Swan. This is hymn number 581, 
Lead us from death to life, the world peace prayer.
Thank you, Pat. And thanks to all of you, to the lay reader, Kevin Gromley, to the soloist, Greg Stinson, to Patricia, of course, for providing the music, and to all of you who have come to listen to this time together. Hope you'll join us again next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. And also remember that we do a Wednesday at 3 p.m. inspiration time. That's a little more like a Bible study. So please do join us. And in the meantime, may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you, abide with you, live with you forever, and help you to love and serve God with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen.